All right, Shalom Akim. Y'all Bashim al Shai broke a thumb to you and your house. May Y'all Bashim al Shai continue to give you the mental fortitude and strength to endure his word and to fight against all oppositions, anything that, it, uh, any obstacle course that you find in your way. All praises to you, how Bashim al Shai, Bashim Hawa Kakwadash. Dub on to the apostles of Great Millstone who have, um, through time, shown us that it could be done of enduring and still showing us that um, they're enduring, which allows us to believe a portion of our belief is uh, seeing them, them endure that we could continue to endure. All right, peace and mercy to you, brother. All right, man, uh, the Spirit of the Lord, uh, as soon as I woke up, um, I was able to check out Apostle Ram Lob's newest live stream and um, one of them horror hitters. And uh, all it did was just want me to add, build, and just, you know, help out the brother and further help because that video helped me out, you know. So that's what I'm finna do this time. I'm for this. What I'm finna do in this lesson. Matter of fact, this lesson is going to be called. This lesson is going to be called Satan the Roaring Lion, seeing who really fears the Most High, or Yahweh. All right. And uh, yeah, brothers, man. One of the things that I've been I've been able to pick up in the spirit of the Lord is what what really counts is staying in this thing, all right? And doing this thing, understanding that you're gonna be fighting mentally all the time, you know, from the point you come into where you're at now. You're gonna be fighting mentally, and that's one of the most important things to uh be on your P's and Q's about. You want to be circumspect or like the scriptures say, be vigilant and sober minded. Because at all times, it's a war. And if you're not paying attention to yourself, if you're not paying attention to the opposition that's going against you, then it's going to take you, man. All of us, if you, all of us, if we ain't, if we not in that proper mindset of walking in spirit, that mental fight, you're going to lose it. You know? So... Let's get into this real quick. I want to just go into this book of Job, the first chapter, and I just want to um, just reiterate a lot of these a lot of these points that's up in this chapter, which has helped us, brethren, you know, continue to fight this thing, man. These stories, all right. So let me grab this up in Job chapter one verse. All right. So this is Job chapter one. Verse 6, it says, Now there was a day when the sons of Yahweh came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also along, and, and, and Satan came also among them. Now the first thing that I'm going to do in this lesson is, well, let's look up this word Satan. You got to, you know, if you want to get proper understanding, you want to get a real solid understanding, you got to look into these words. Now, when you look into this word Satan right here, <clears throat> it's going to let you know something. It goes back to the Strong's H7, 853, and the Hebrew word is Shatan. And it says, one, who's, one who withstands. So Satan is going to withstand you, okay? And anything good that you desire to do, Satan will withstand you, all right? It says, now when you jump down, <clears throat> let me see, uh, when you jump down and you jump into the, the, the lexicon at the bottom, it says, it says, Satan, the devil, the evil genius, who seduces man, who seduceth Man, you see, so Satan's job, let me say there's any more in there, I think that was pretty much it, so Satan's job, his name, his normal omen, is a key indicator to you of his power and what he could do, he's there to withstand you, he's there to try to seduce you, to seduce you from the heavenly father, to withstand you from the heavenly father, to be the adversary. That's the actual, actually what the word Satan means, adversary. And guess what, bros? 
That's his power given him from the Father. The Heavenly Father loves that he created Satan in his fashion. And Satan was created, like the title say, to see who feared the most high. Who really fears him and who really don't. So, like I tell, like, you know, me, myself, personally, there, I, I show respect to a lot of things, man. I show respect to the order that the Heavenly Father set up. I don't sit around, walk around, talk about F Satan and, you know, I, I, you know, I don't do that stupid stuff like that. Go ahead if you want and let's see if, if, if let's see if he don't fuck with you further. If you don't show that sense of respect of the Heavenly Father's order, you see? It's just like a side key note, all right? Don't be going around talking about, man, fuck Satan and, uh, and that nigga, he's a bitch and all this extra shit, you know what I mean? Go ahead and do that if you want, though, all right? And let's see if he don't if he don't fuck with you more, all right? So we looked at the word Satan right there. First thing you you understanding that what he's his nomen omen, okay? Meaning his name prediction, okay? It says, "And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou?" <clears throat> then Satan answered the Lord and said, "From going to and fro in the earth, and walking up and down in it." All right. So, this guy, Satan, is in a constant motion of coming to and fro on the earth. You know? So, that's the reason why we tell brethren in the scriptures warns us to be in the spirit at all times because you don't know. You don't know. You can't see the spiritual realm. So, knowing that he coming to and fro and you can't see the spiritual realm, the best idea and the best thing to do is to always be in the spirit. Or like the head brother of the camp loved to say, if you, ain't, you, ain't, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. You see? All right? So, real quick, I got a couple precepts right here for that one. When you jump to the book of um, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. So when you look up sober, it means to have temperance. To be it actually the one of the definitions say to have a calm, collective spirit. Paying attention to yourself. All right, making sure that yourself, who you are as a person, is not going against the heavenly Father or. Inviting in uh, uh, say, uh, um, spirits of the left hand side, which which allows Satan to get you. Okay, having temperance of yourself, checking yourself, making sure you ain't indulging too much in here, there, praying. You know, getting your job done. You need to do spiritually, and taking care of your business. As far as being subjected to payments and everything. All right? And village it, meaning to watch. And then you got to watch. You got to have temperance of your body and be paying attention to everything. You know, when you're out and about in your everyday life and everything. And anywhere you go, paying attention to things, man. Because you could go somewhere and from not paying attention, that's what caused all the harm. That's what caused the, the ill will to come upon you because you just simply wasn't paying attention. The Lord was giving all the signs, but you wasn't paying attention. And Satan got you. You know, he was able to, stri to strike you. So be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walking about seeking who he may devour. And that's his job of what he's supposed to do. He wants to devour you. He wants to make sure he take you from the faith. Okay? And if he do so, he did his job. It ain't like the Heavenly Father gonna give him, gonna say, what are you doing, Satan? Why would you do such a thing? And we understand these things. And the Lord gave us the guidance on what to do in order to not be grabbed up, to be devoured. It says, whom resist steadfast in the faith because the same afflictions are accomplishing your brethren which are in the world. And in your faith, 
your belief in this thing, the belief in the instructions that the Lord gave us on how to fight Satan, that belief in this thing, you know, um, that's what will stand him or keep him back. There's even precepts in the book of Matthew, the fourth chapter, when Satan came to, te to tempt Yahweh Shai. It, it, it shows you that the way, the how Yahweh Shai was able to fight Satan back was to a poor, how he was, how he fought him back was um, hitting him back with scriptures, hitting him with scriptures, sticking to the scripts, the scriptures of the Heavenly Father's word. So that's how you fight him. You know, you fight him by being reminded of what, what the Lord said. And that's what keeps him back. That's his, that's like, um, that's our repellent. Like you have bug repellent. Well, that's our spiritual repellent against Satan. And it works. And then it said, and then one of our comforts is knowing that you're not the only one going through it, you know? And that's one of a hell of a thing that comforts me because I'm not the only one going through this thing. So there is somebody out there that, that understands me, right? <clears throat> Let me grab this next. Um... <clears throat> Let me go back to Job real quick before I go there. It says, uh, verse 7, it says, And the Lord said on Satan, Whence comest thou? Then, then uh, Satan answered and said, from going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. So Satan, like we was explaining, Satan is on a constant move or motion going to and fro in the heavens. And he's seeing who's slipping and who's not. And he's like a roaring lion when he sees you slip. He's trying to devour you. But that goes back to Matthew 12 and 43. Because before you came into truth, you had an evil spirit on you. That was causing you to do things against the Heavenly Father. And once you came into the truth, that evil spirit left from you. But in Matthew 12 and 43, it tells you what that evil spirit um, does after he leaves from, your, leaves from you. It says, um, Matthew 12 and 43, it says, When the unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. So, when the unclean spirit come out of you, that, that spirit come off of you, he's, 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 he's seeking rest. He's walking through places and he finds no rest. Why? Because his inhabitation, his original inhabit, uh, uh, habitat was you. He needs to get back to you to find that rest. So, in other words, he wants you again. That reminds me of Satan walking to and fro in the earth. Okay? He wants you again. All right? It says, Then he said, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. The house being you. The, the demon wants to come back to the house that it came out of. So what do you think that, that that spirit that left from you was always doing? He's always... Like the brother Dama'a, the third in command over here, like to say, he always checking that doorknob and seeing if that house is locked. If the spirit of the Lord is still governing that house, he checking that doorknob. And if, as like we read in Peter's, if you're not sober and vigilant, he's going to open that door up. And what's going to happen? It's going to tell you further in this, in this, in this Matthew. It said, then said he, then he said, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall also be this wicked generation. So, if that door is open, if the spirit of the Lord ain't dwelling no more there. You didn't did something, you ain't paying attention to yourself, you didn't. You know, you the fear of the Lord, you you, you lost it. Oh, he's gonna open that door up. He's gonna see your house has been swept, empty and garnished. You you started a new, you started a new um journey, which was in the spirit of the Lord, which allowed you to clean up your house. He that demon gonna walk in and see, oh damn, he didn't clean it up in the pen here. You know, your mind been uh um cleaned up. 
But what he going to do since he got now he got more space. He going to bring seven other spirits more stronger than him, wicked than him. To enter into the house to make sure he keep it on lock. You see? And the last state of you going to be worse than what you started. Because now you got multiple demons on you. So, jumping back to that, that, that Satan as a devouring lion. Satan going to and fro in the earth. Matthew 12, the demon wants to get back inside you. It's important to, to be in the spirit of the Lord at all times, as best as you can, fighting this thing, remembering that you're fighting. Don't ever forget that you're fighting. Because it's easy to forget that you're fighting if you're not physically throwing your hands. Nah, man, this is a mental war. Remember, you're in a mental war, all of us. Verse 8, it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth the heavenly father and escheweth evil. Now, when the Lord said that Job was perfect, what it meant by him saying that Job was perfect, meaning that he was blameless. Because there's like, like it's written, there's no man on this earth that have, that have a sinned or, you know, Having did something contrary to the Heavenly Father, the only one that was able to do that, was given that power, was, was the beloved Yahweh Shai. The only one that was that did that. But to remain blameless, though, you know, in every situation that Job found himself in, he remained blameless in those situations, man, which made him perfect. You see? So we're practicing this same, we're practicing this same estate that Job had in his mind. We're trying to be blameless. We're trying to be upright. All right? You're thinking about everything that you think about is um, governed by the laws of the Heavenly Father. You know? Upright. Your judgment is on point with what the Heavenly Father has to say. And like it says in Sirach, the second chapter, set thy heart aright and constantly endure. And then you're enduring that. You're keeping, you're sticking to that proper judgment. So blameless, sticking to that proper judgment. And you fear the Heavenly Father. Like it said, you fear the Lord. And then you run away from evil. It shoot me to flee evil, to get the freak out of there. Brothers, we've all practiced in these same, the same state of mind that Job had. That we're the modern day Job's. All right, we're shoot, we're 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 trying to be perfect, be blameless. We're we're we're, we're trying to keep our mind upright, stick to the proper judgments. We fear, we 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 believe to fear the Lord, and we get the fuck out of evil. We get the freak away from evil. It be, it's so, it's so. It's, we're so tedious about getting away from evil that um, we really don't do too much. Like, like I heard Apostle Ram Lop say in this video, we in and out. Everywhere we go, anything we do, we in and out. We gone quick. Get what we got, get and get the fuck out of here because evil was everywhere. So we practice the same state of mind that Job have. That Job had. And Satan knows that as we read him. He knows that about you. All right? <clears throat> Satan knows that about you, and the Heavenly Father knows it as well, as, we, we, as we're reading. It says, then answered... Let me see. Uh, <clears throat> so, so, dealing with the eschewing of evil, if, if you flee, get the freak out, you, you, you desire to get the freak away from evil, well, guess what? Satan wants to invite you to that evil. He wants to change your mind on how you believe it's evil. He wants you to, he wants to invite you in. You see? We got to be aware. Verse 9 says, Then Satan answered, and answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear, fear the Heavenly Father for not? Does Job fear you for no reason? That's what Job, 
that's what Satan told the Heavenly Father after the Heavenly Father told him the beautiful character of Job, that he is sure of evil and, and etc. Satan said, well, he fear, he don't, it ain't like he just, he just like that. He has this good character about him for no reason, you know? And then Joe, jo or then Satan goes on further to say what he believes why Job fears the most high. Okay? It says, has thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and, and about all that he have on every side? That was what, what Satan's rebuttal was to the Heavenly Father. He said, look, man, Job don't just fear you for no reason. It ain't like he just... Nah, the reason why he fears you is because you're protecting him. You got a hedge about him, his house, and on all sides. That's the reason why he fear you. And then we're going to read on further how he wants to... Look... Take away that hedge and all that, and I guarantee you, he ain't going to fear you like that. Do you know it's a lot of people in this world, that's how they move. We understand that as being men of understanding. There's people out there, they're fakes, man. They'll say they this and they say they that. They'll say they this and they that. They the hardest person or they the, they the most whatever it is that they're saying that they are. But then they get put to the test, and they you, we all see that all the time. They find out, we find out they ain't nothing. They ain't half the shit that they said or what they believed. That should not be like that for us brothers in this word of Yahweh Bashem al Shah. You're supposed to really be about this thing, really believing in this thing. And when affliction and things hit you, um, you have the mind to stand on your principles, your integrity, your faith, which you've built in the Lord. We're not hot air balloons. You know? We ain't full of air. We have substance behind us and faith and true belief. That's what we're supposed to have, at least. Okay? So, Satan was like, look, like we just said, Satan said, look, man, you protecting him. That's why. And that's about fact. Now, when you look up this word hedge right here, check this out. <clears throat> When you look up this word hedge right here, it goes back to the Strong's H7753. And the Hebrew word is shawad, shawak, I'm sorry, shawak. And then you go down to the, it says that, you know, to, uh, to fence up about, to fence about, hedge up, of course. Now, when you go down, it tells you something key. When you look into the, the, the bottom at the bottom in the lexicon, it says, Thou fences, it says, Thou fences round him, thou guardest him to guard the most high, the heavenly father Yahweh has a guard around us, man. We have a guard around us. Alright? What is that guard? Brother Ren should know what the next verse that I'm um Finna run too. <clears throat> what is that guard? Psalms 34 and 7. It says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. Remember, it said that Job feared the most high. Well, Job had angels around him to protect him. That was that hedge that guarded him. And Satan said, Look, lower that. Lord, those angels that's protecting him. And let me just do my, do my magic on him, that the power that you've given me. And I guarantee you that Satan ain't going to be, I mean, uh, that Job ain't going to be like he was once before. That's what Satan is betting on. You see, brothers, the, the, um, the challenge is the challenge that in the heavens that we have against our spirits to get you. Okay. <clears throat> And the next, and then, then, then you could jump to Jeremiah, the first chapter, just to further um, edify on how you, you're guarded. Jeremiah 1 and 18 says, For behold, I have made thee this day a defensed city, 
and the iron pillar and the brass walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. And that was told to Jeremiah when he was getting ready to start his ministry, that the Lord was going to make him. Not literally uh, create a, a, a big giant city with walls of iron and no, man. Jo I mean, J Jeremiah was that city or he was that iron pillar. And then Lord said, look, and he's going to make him an iron pillar against all his adversaries, the priests and the king and etc. And he said they was going to fight against you, Jeremiah. But they wasn't going to prevail because I am with you to, deli to deliver you. So Jeremiah had those angels in that hedge as well. The very same hedge that Satan was inquiring of to the Heavenly Father. So, us brethren, we have a hedge. And at times, the Heavenly Father will allow the left hand side to, 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 to get in, to he'll lower the hedge. And it'll be a test on you. It'll be a test. Like we read in Job, it was a test for him. Sometimes your, your hedge is lowered because you got to get judged. You may did something that was off in the Lord. So the Lord allowed uh, some evil to come on you. Like Apostle Ramlai was explaining, it's, a, oh, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's, a, it's like a collage of different reasons why the Lord could lower the hedge on you. You know, a test. You know, you did something, you did something off, you need to be judged. And etc. Any other, any other reason you could think of. Okay, it says, um, it says, it says, uh, thou has blessed the work of his hand and, and, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he have and he will curse thee to thy face. Now, curse thee to thy face. I looked up the Hebrew words behind curse thee to thy face. And you know what it said? It said, La'ah Barak. La'ah Barak. What is them Hebrew words? That's no blessings. All right? No blessings. Joel, I mean, Satan is saying to the Heavenly Father, if you take that hedge down and you touch him a little bit, start putting him through some, some afflictions and testing him, He's going to curse you to your face. He ain't going to bless you no more. He's not going to bless you no more. That's what Satan is saying. He ain't going to bless you, Abba, Father. So that's what Satan wants to do with you. He wants to, he wants to mess your mind up so bad that you stop believing in the Heavenly Father that the Most High is either real or the most high could protect you or 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 whatever. Just like in the world, I've heard people say the reason why they don't believe in the Heavenly Father, say for instance, they their parents got in a car accident and they lost their parents when they was young. Both parents. And that's the reason why they don't believe in the Heavenly Father no more. They don't want to bless the Lord no more. They don't want to believe in him, they don't want to bless him no more. So that's what it means when it says, curse thee to thy face. He wants you to not acknowledge the Heavenly Father no more to give him his reverence or nothing. And once you do that, your ass is basically in a group of the two thirds. Okay? All right? Because, let me go to, um, when you read the book of Sirach, the 17th chapter, it says the elect will praise his holy name. You know? Anybody that loves the Heavenly Father, they're going to continually bless him. They're going to always have him on, his, on their mind and everything of the sort. Okay? So, um, let me give it a continue on further. Um, okay. To the, to the, so, that's a key point. That's a key point when it says, curse thee to thy face. When you look at the Hebrew right there, it says, Barak La'ah. Okay? No blessing. Okay? It says, verse 12 says, And the Lord said unto, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he have is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth 
from the presence of the Lord. So <clears throat> the Lord allows Satan to do that. You know, don't be startled. Or like it say up in, like I heard Apostle Ramla bring it out, that Corinthians, there's no temptation uh, that's unknown to man. We all go through this stuff. Don't be startled that you go through something. You know, that you're being tested on something. Akiam, hey, even myself, you got to learn how to fight that. Where is that? Where is the light at the end of this tunnel? And like, like man, brothers, you know, I've, I've been through it. I, I'm, always going, I'm always going through shit. And I, it'd be intense. It'd be intense. And at that moment, you'd be thinking there is no help. You know? But nah, man, when I be doing that, man, I, 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 when them thoughts come across, man, I mean, fuck that. Where is the hole? Where is the light at the end of this tunnel? How long, Lord, are you putting me in this for affliction? Balku Shah, give me the strength to endure. A lot of times I find myself trying to pray to get rid of it. When really I should have, really, it was in vanity. Because it wasn't going nowhere until the Lord said it was time for it to go somewhere. So really, my, what I, what I should have been saying was, Lord, give me the strength to endure it. Because the other prayer of getting rid of it is vanity because that's not what the Lord want. He wants a certain duration of time on it. So now I need to be praying to the Lord to give me the strength and to endure it. And that's why, and I mean, and that's what I'm trying to say as far as don't be startled with when you're going through your things. Just, um, like I said, be sober. Be, have that calm, collective spirit and look for look for the righteous way out of it you know praying to the heavenly father fasting if you have to all right cutting things off in your life that's not good for you i don't know what it is but finding how to defeat them how to defeat whatever the problem is or the affliction is spiritually trying to find it you know while you in that still in that intense moment of the affliction. All right. This is just some key pointers. I tell myself how to fight brothers. And if I, if I understand this mental, if I understand this mind frame and it has worked for me, then I'm going to deliver it. I'm going to deliver it to brethren out there that deal with the same afflictions in the world. Okay. So <clears throat> when you jump to, and then we know that Satan he came and he attacked exactly what jo everything Job loved the most. He got that. So the things that you love the most and you hold dear is, is um, what you're going to be fighting against. I mean, that's going to be taken from you. That's what I meant to say. I'm sorry. So we know that Job was, he was victorious in that first round. But Satan came back a second time. And on the second time, he, he, he um, let me read verse 3, Job 2 and 3. And it says, and the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, who feareth the heavenly Father and sheweth evil, and still holdeth fast his integrity. You know? There's a scripture in Romans, the 8th chapter, that says, Who should separate it from the love of Yahweh Shai, man? Of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. It's about holding fast that integrity. Like we were just speaking a couple uh, minutes ago, not being startled about things that's, that's coming upon you, but seeking and searching spiritually a way out of those things, finding that light at the end of the tunnel so that you could continue to maintain your integrity, even in intense moments and situations, man. It says, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. So Satan inquiring of you and the Most High allowing to test you. And that's how and it's cool with the Most High. We ain't going to sit up here and on the earth and be bitches about it. Most High told us to gird up your loins as a man. He told Job the same thing. These are the examples and the stories the Most High gave us to endure this, this story that he put us in. His movie. But then Job said, I mean, then Satan said, I'm sorry, I keep getting the names, a lot of names switched up, but, you know, I'm in and out of different names. I'm sorry. Forgive me, but brothers, 
uh, follow along with me still, Bible Shah. It says that the and Satan answered the Lord and said, "Skin for skin, yea, all that a man have, would he give for his life?" So then it comes to touching you physically. First, the first time Job, I mean Satan couldn't get Job physically, but then the second time he was allowed to, man. So as you continue to grow and get better with this thing, win your battles and your wars. You're going to uh, win your battles, more perfectly said. The war is not over. That's what I meant to say. You're winning your battles, but the war ain't over. Each battle is going to get more and more uh, intense because you're stronger. You're getting stronger as you make it through your battles. So the more faith you get, the more stronger demons that's going to come to test you. It's just like the movie 300. They was kicking the first little army ass. But then when a king seen, oh, damn, these dudes ain't no joke. He sent more people to come get you. Stronger people. He even sent them big creatures. Big giant elephant looking creature. Because you got stronger from the battles, the first battles. Okay? Let me go this up in Job. Um, 13. Job 13 and 15 says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. That was from Job mouth himself, the man that was dealing with this, this crazy ass situation of Satan on his ass. He said, Though he slay me, I will maintain my trust in him. So that's a key point for us, brothers, man. You got to continue to believe in the Lord, you got to continue to bless him. Don't ever la'a barak, you know? Don't ever la'a barak him. Don't ever do that to the most high. Stop giving him his blessings and um, praising him or cursing him to his face, in other words. You know? Because the moment you do that, you out of there. Satan got you. He won. You are defeated. You know? <clears throat> All right? So... Let me grab this real quick. And um, that's why, look, brothers, we got to continue, man. Let me grab this real quick up in um, First Tim. First Tim, uh, First Tim 6 and 12. Brothers, that's why. Check this verse out. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on to eternal life. Run to it, thou are also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Brothers, it's a fight. You know what I'm saying? And I don't see Apostle Tahar, Apostle Gabar, Apostle Ramlab, you know, in the middle of a damn boxing ring with their hands up in the air with a championship belt going across their chest. We ain't talking about them type of fights, man. Mental. Sticking up, standing, fighting for the Lord. Nobody cares about the Lord on this planet except for the elect and who the Lord has allotted to care. And that's a very small number versus the thousands that, that, that's, that's on the wicked side, man. More, way more wicked. That's a hell of a fight. They, like, they always, these people are always doing wickedness which cause demons to be summoned in the earth. You see? And them demons run around and they fuck with you all day. As soon as you go out, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pool, a pit pool of fucking demons everywhere. Only if you could see them, you would be scared of shit. You know? You walk into Walmart, if you could see the demons, you'd be scared of shit, man. That's how many demons it is. And we gotta fight those things. <clears throat> I'm glad the Lord don't show us. That type of fashion. It'd be like that movie Branded. It's a movie called Branded where the guy had, he could see the demons that was on the people. Everywhere he go, a big old demon hanging off the shoulder of people, man. That shit will bug you the fuck out. But the Lord don't show us that. He just, we just go walk in the spirit amongst these people. And uh, we don't try to indulge in anything they got fucking going, man. Because that shit is death. But that's the good fight, man. Okay? You gotta continue to fight, man. 
so that you may lay hold on to eternal life. Remembering that there is there's a reason why you're fighting. You want to win. You want to reign with Yahweh Shai. Okay? Let me grab this last one real quick in, um, in the book of... Uh, let me see. Uh, Let me just type in remember and Job. Oh, that's not. That's all right. Mm. I know it should pop up now. Good door. Here you go. Real quick, bear with me. Job chapter 5, I mean James chapter 5, verse 11. It says, Behold, we count them happy to endure. We have heard the patience of Job. We just spoke on the, the beginning stages of what Job was dealing with. And we know about what happened later on in that story, man. We've heard the patience of Job. Hey, brothers, we them Job's again. We fighting like Job. You know, remembering how he moved when he when he was fighting. And incorporating it with us, with ourselves. It says, we have heard the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord. That the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. And the Most High had Job the whole time. The Most High had Job, man. You know, and the Most High, Yahweh Bashem al Shai going to have us. He going to have us too, man. We got to just continue to bless the Lord. Continue to do what is right before his face and praying and fasting and doing whatever it is we need to do. To keep that mental balance and stability and his faith all the way on to the end. Like Italian Revelations, the second chapter, the 26th verse. He that overcometh. He that overcometh. Hey, brothers, man. This pretty Abashmael Shah. This has been late. Satan, the roaring lion, seeing who really fears Yahweh, man. The Heavenly Father or the Most High. Hey, brother, man, stay strong out there. Remember what you're fighting. And continue to be aware and alert of what is the, the situation that's, that's targeting you, okay? Which is uh, the left-hand side trying to get you out of the word of the Heavenly Father by all means necessary. All right? But as long as you walk in the Spirit, believing, doing things right and, uh, and the, the, to the perfect and acceptable, acceptable will of the Heavenly Father, I will believe you'll be fine. I will believe you'll be a part of the elect. May Yahweh Hashem Al-Shai be with us all. Yahweh Hashem Al-Shai broke a thumb to you, brothers. Bless the Lord. Shalom, Akim Step. Shalom.